Okay. Hi, this is Annie Callis here, and I am so excited to be on the Prosperity Show with, uh, with Gorgeous Prosper, and I just made him blush, and we're actually going to talk about goal setting and how goal setting is actually going to take your life forward. So I hope that you're going to enjoy this. Of course you will, because it's fabulous. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Annie. Annie, how are you doing? I'm awesome. How are you, Prosper? Fantastic. Right. Now, Annie here happens to be an educator that helps you set your goals. Now, as you would know, without goals, you lack focus and you lack direction. So if you set your own personal goals, it puts you in the driver's seat and gives you power to transform your own life into whatever direction you desire. Now, Annie, can you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and how you actually help people? Okay, well, first of all, I would just like to say gratitude. Thank you for having me. And thank you to everybody that's going to be watching this. I really appreciate it for allowing me to share what I do with you. So how, what do I do? I, I work with people and I help them create clarity and create some goals, have accountability. I do accountability coaching with them and helping them to get to their next step. Because sometimes people can read books but don't know how to apply them or go to events and don't know how to apply them. So it's great to have a coach that can actually hold your hand for a little while until you change your habits and then let you go and do it. So one of my programs is a goal setting program, which is, it's my passion. I love this program. I went through it many, many times myself and I always achieved the goal. So I decided, and this uh, program was designed by two of my mentors, uh, Blair Singer and Mac Newton. They are two uh, educators from Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm certified by Blair Singer's Academy. So I decided that I want to create a program around this this goal setting program that they had but i want to make it into a workshop so i made it into a workshop great stuff obviously to accomplish goals one has to know how to set them and i suppose that this is what your workshop sort of uh, walks people through can you walk us through the processes that you have now um sort of elaborated or have created for your clients now okay thank you for that so um there it's got three parts so the first part has um four reasons why i I'll go through why people don't achieve their goals and i do this is experiential learning so it's not about me just standing in front of people and talking at them it's actually doing the work with them so i facilitate the workshop and i always say the gifts are inside everybody and everybody has the answer inside of them i am just a vehicle or the person that helps them to, to find it within themselves. So I do certain exercises and I let them share with each other because they, by sharing with another, you can learn a lot. And, um, and then once they go through and they have a good understanding of the four, I would say the four main reasons, then we go into starting to create goals. And what I found is in general, and I was one of these people, I only created goals in my, career however in life we have to have a balance so we've got our family life you know whether you're married with children or your parents or your friends so we've got that life then we have our career but then we also have the self and it just so happens that people tend to forget about themselves and their own growth in order to be in the right place themselves to be able then to to offer more to their families or to offer more to their employers or within their own business. Because if you're not in the right space, then you find that you keep on giving and you burn out. So right. I think it's very, very important. And then the third part is I have a 12 step system that will allow them to, and help them to actually go through and then achieve their goals. Great stuff. Now, what you're saying, you know, resonates with quite a lot of people um, in as much as some people lack the faith and the belief in themselves 
in in what they can manage to do and how they can uh, pull out the goals process. Now, how do you help people to actually have confidence in themselves and their ability so that they would follow through with the goals that they have? Well, in the first part, so as I mentioned, there's three parts. The first part where we talk about uh, where I work with them on the reasons why they're not achieving them. There's, there's some coaching that goes on in there. So I do exercises with them and then stuff comes up through the exercises and then I actually get them to share and I start coaching and I, and I coach. And then, I mean, to, get, to overcome yourself, it's not a one minute thing as you would know yourself. You know, it takes time and it takes more coaching. But I, I found, and especially when I did this the first time, I had some major, major light bulb moments. And may I share one of them? Oh yeah, oh definitely. That's why we're here today. So one of the one of the reasons why people don't achieve their goals is because they think they don't deserve it. Right. So they have. We all, as children we had a dream. We all had something that was extraordinary. And then as we grow up, people start telling you, well, why you want to do that? Because it doesn't fit into their image for you or their goals for you. And all of a sudden you kind of forget. And then as you get older, one day you go, I really like that. I, I would have loved to have been an astronaut. Well, anybody can be an astronaut. They just have to go for it. So I do a deservingness exercise which is very powerful. I'm not going to give it away here, but it's very powerful. And all of a sudden people start to look at the negative and the positive and which one, which one feels better. And everybody wow. sort of says, well, the positive stuff feels better. So it's opening up the window to them to show them how in general people look at life. And it's very easy, as you would know, it's very easy for us to go to the negative. Right. It's much, harder to be positive because around us sometimes the support is not there and that's another reason why people don't uh, don't achieve their goals is because their environment could be pulling them down it's not supporting their dream it's not supporting their goals so people need to look at who am i hanging around with are these people lifting me to my to the next level or they're holding me back Right. So it's understanding and starting to look at, again, yeah, there's an exercise there that I do with them where they really start to go within and find out, hang on, really, who am I hanging around with? Right. And then also, I'm giving them all away now, but I might as well. The, the, other, the other reason why people don't achieve their goals is their dominant, um, their dominant and negative thoughts. So... It, we are very uh, good at telling ourselves why we're not good enough or why we can't do it or we're not clever enough. So then giving them tools, um, certain self-talk that can help them when, they, when their awareness is raised and they're very conscious about what's happening, then they're able to realize, okay, hang on, I'm kind of my little voice and see how I've got here, little voice. Um, my little voice is telling me this is not right or I'm not being good enough. And then you can stop yourself and go, no, right. I am. Mm. And then the last, the last reason why people don't achieve their goals is because it's the wrong goal. A lot of people have found that they pick goals to satisfy somebody else. It's not their goal. It's somebody else's goal for them. So then we do an exercise where they really go deep, well, as deep as they allow themselves to go to start dreaming, to start to actually put down something that they really want. Now, I remember when I did it the very first time, I kind of said, well, one of the things that I want is to have 30 positively geared properties. And then I wrote it down. And then after that, I looked at it and I went, oh, my God that's big that's really <laughs> out there but i put it down because you know what if you don't put it down on paper and my my um mentor mac newton says successful people think on paper because we have anywhere between 50 to 70 thousand thoughts a day and you know there's those people that tell you oh it's all in here but you don't remember all of it. So it's great to put it all down on paper 
and goal setting it's done on paper right so, okay so so in order in order for you to actually eventuate that goal you have to have a plan of attack is that what you're saying how really critical and important is it to actually write down those goals and schedule the dates for their completion and evaluation it is very important because first of all um when you set goals you want you have to look at them all the time because otherwise you forget you actually completely forget when i did my first goal setting in 2013 i wrote all these goals down and then for 12 weeks i kept on rewriting them and then i stopped and but i started achieving them because i was doing what i needed to do i followed the system and i was achieving i was achieving the goals and just recently I went back and it's absolutely amazing how many of the 15 goals that I wrote down, I actually achieved. Right. And it's one of those things, the more you write it, the more you look at it, the more is ingrained in not only your mind, but in your being. Because through the exercises that we do, we go to what is important in here, not just here, because this and this has to be as one. Right. Because right. I, I believe, I mean, I experienced this and I'm sure a lot of people would relate to this is that what you feel is the truth. And then we very easily talk ourselves out of it. Right. So in other words, what you're trying to say is a goal has much of a greater chance. Um, if it is aligned to who you are as a person and if it is also dealing with specific facts and events that you are aligned with and, um, things that actually work with you. What happens when your goals are just wishy-washy and they're probably vague? Well, do you know, it's interesting today when, um, when you put that question up on, um, on Facebook about what do we offer, who are our clients? And then we started talking a little bit and I, and I, and you mentioned, um, your response to me was about new year resolutions. Right. So, New Year res resolutions are like a wish because we go, ooh, we want to, and, and most people want to lose weight. That's a really big one. Yeah, I'm going to lose weight. But if you don't make it a goal, if you don't make it a target, if you don't make, if you don't have intention behind it, this is why, as you said, by September, they haven't done it because they, they're not serious. Because when you're serious, you write a goal, you write it down, you follow the steps. Most people want to know how to do something before they actually dream of or, or, or create a goal. First, work it out what you want, and then the how will come. Because okay. you have to have your passion and your desire to, to go for it. Then you want to look at who are the people that can help you achieve it. What, else, what are the obstacles that can stop you? And what are the things that you might need to learn? So it's not just, it's not just, okay, it's just going to happen. There's work that needs to be done. Right. So there's accountability that comes with that too. And that's something that we as human beings are not very good at. <laughs> Understandable. So obviously at the, at the start of this question, you did mention losing weight and how a lot of people fall short because such a goal is too audacious and is not measurable. Now, how is it how important is it for you to have quantifiable or something that you can actually measure in order to achieve the goals well it's interesting like we go with uh, with weight loss for example um i can if i may share my personal experience with that i actually lost 20 kilos a few years ago right. i was weight for about 15 years and i wanted i because when i was younger i was always very slim you know could wear anything sexy would go into a dressing room and just put anything on and i'd be one of those girls coming out going oh look at me i look fabulous and after that when i put on all the weight it's interesting it's like the universe was playing games with me I was embarrassed. I would not step out of the dressing room and I would not let the assistant to come and see me. I was embarrassed. So then in my mind, I always wanted to be skinny and sexy. When I gave that up, 
and I said, I want to be healthy, strong and fit because I'm getting older and like I'm 51 years old now. So if I'm not healthy now, then what's going to happen as the years come? Because as we get older, it, it doesn't work as fast as it did at 20. So the moment that I decided to be healthy, that's all that mattered. It didn't matter how much, how many kilos I am, what mattered that I, I sleep well and I, um, I'm energetic and I'm able to come and go and walk without pain and all that kind of stuff. So everybody's measure is a little bit different. And the thing is, is that when you start losing weight and if you exercise and do weights, you kind of remain the same weight because you have muscle. So a lot of people get very caught up on the, in the weighing machine. So as far as the measure is concerned, everybody should set their own measure and not worry about somebody else's marriage measure, but you've got to have some type of measure because you need to look forward to something. You've got right. to work yeah. to something. Yeah. Right stuff. So you did mention a little bit earlier on that um, you, you did set some really audacious goals and then you looked at them, you're like, wow, how am I going to achieve them? Is it really important to actually aspire for something that's attainable? Because at the end of the day, I mean, there's nothing wrong with shooting for the stars, but is, how important is it to actually set goals that you know you're going to achieve? Um, it's very important. And I think when you set goals, got to have a bit of everything because you got to have something that you, you want to reach for the stars. So you got to find a balance. You got to have a bit of this and you got to have a bit of that. You also have to have tangible goals, goals and intangible goals. So for example, one of my intangible goals was to, was to be true to myself. How do you quantify that? How do you see that? How do you prove that? How do you touch that? You don't. But you know. You know when you're there because you know what your truth is and you're comfortable in yourself. And when you feel fulfilled and content and happy in yourself and you don't expect somebody else to give it to you, then you are true to yourself. Right. Okay. So in this day and age where obviously people are being asked to be true to themselves, be authentic, you know, nothing demotivates you more than not being able to achieve something you're set up to do. Now, how important then would it have to be in order for your goals to be actually realistic? Okay. It's, it's interesting you're asking this question. The thing is, I think that people get caught up in is that they set a goal and then if they don't achieve it, then they feel bad. However, the, the whole secret to this, well, this is just my opinion, is the journey. Because you might not achieve the goal. However, along the way, you might have learned something or gained something much more precious and powerful and beneficial than the goal itself. All right. Okay. Because, right. So say for example, you're a business owner and you want to, let's say make a million dollars in your business this year and you made 950,000. So then you can sit there beating yourself up that I didn't make the extra 50. But if you sit down and write down everything that you learned and did along the way, then you learn more from it. And then, for example, your father comes and tells you, I am so proud of you. And all of a sudden you realize that the whole thing, the whole goal is not about the million dollars because you made 950,000. So you learn through the process, where did you miss out on a 50 grand? But what is important is that your father is so proud of you. So all of a sudden everything shifts and right. it gives you more, right? Yeah. So, so I always tell people, don't get so caught up. Have, have an end date and sometimes the end date might have to shift. And that is okay. You have to give yourself permission to fail, to make mistakes and to learn from them. 
Right. Okay. So obviously you did mention that people really beat themselves up for the remaining 50,000, um, you know, dollars that they didn't manage to make, but every set goal should actually be grounded in some sort of a time frame. And obviously you did mention about it being a journey and having time. Is there a need to have a sense of agency within your goals or should you just let it be, I'll make a million dollars in 2045 and whenever it, that, that time comes around? Well, of course, there's an urgency. I mean, if there's no urgency, then you don't do anything. Then, it, then again, it becomes uh, a resolution or a wish. And a wish simply is a goal without energy behind it. Because when you have a goal and you have that burning desire to achieve it because you can taste it, you can feel it, you can smell it, you know what it feels like. And this is, this is where within the program we do visualization. And as we set everything up, then we get them to, to imagine it. And I have not had anybody so far who would say, no, nah, I didn't see it. They felt it. Some of them have tears. Some of them are smiling. Some of them are sitting in the chair going, this is so exciting. And that creates the urgency. Now, this is where I would recommend, and this is something that I did, is that it's all great when you have all these realizations in an event, right? But after that, it's great to have someone who helps you because this is when the little voice comes up you have the urgency and you go really hard for the, for the first, let's say, one month, two months, three months, depending when, when is your date and depending how audacious and huge is this goal, everything is possible as you know it and you just proved it yourself, haven't you? Coming from where you came from and where you're at now. So everything is possible, but then you if you feel that that you you need more help then seek the help get a coach right. get a life coach get a business coach get a whatever coach you need get a clearing practitioner whatever you need to clear out that little voice that starts to play with you right. and then you, you you might fall back into into the old ways great and then stuff. yeah Great. Well, obviously, if you're watching this, you would be uh, noticing that, uh, you know, Anne is just dropping all the nuggets regarding goal setting. But you're probably sitting at the edge of your chair right now just going, okay, fine, I've been working towards my goals. And, you know, obviously things have been tough. You've probably um, fallen off the bandwagon and now you want to go back in there again. And you're probably facing adversity, like she says, um, that your environment could also be contributing and, um, you know, have you know, people that are around you that are not uh, helping you out. Now, how then can one person maybe hold themselves accountable? Um, you know, like you're just saying there and, um, you know, in order for them to actually achieve these goals. Okay. Well, I have to say that is a real tough one to have personal accountability. I would say that if they have someone that they trust and ask them to hold them accountable, it's very hard to hold yourself accountable because if they held themselves accountable in the first place, then they wouldn't have fallen off the bandwagon or they would have gotten back up on the horse almost straight away because you do have setbacks and you, you do feel sorry for yourself for a little while and then you go, okay. So again, this comes back down to, personal growth and personal improvement where you work on you you've got to work on yourself first to have a real understanding of who you are and what makes you tick and then be able to go out there and you know like um this is a big one for salespeople because they have to go and sell if you actually are not comfortable in yourself if you don't have a good relationship with asking for the sale, asking for money, if you're not uh, comfortable in front of people because you wonder what they think of you, you are not going to make the sale. Whereas a sale, a sale is purely communication and offering something to another person. If you believe in your product, then offer it to them. If they say no, 
it's not a no, it's just they don't have enough information. Right. So again, if you work on you to get yourself to understand you and what's coming up for you, then it's much easier to go out and actually do whatever you do. And we are all salespeople. We sell to our children. Our children sell to us, don't they? <laughs> Their energy is higher than ours every single day. And they're selling to us something. We sell something to our partners, to our wives, to our husbands, to our friends. We're constantly selling. Right. Great stuff. Um, it, it's funny how you're talking about kids. My little girl is an active hostage negotiator around here. She he knows <laughs> how to get away um, with things. Now, obviously, this then brings us now to rounding up uh, this talk. It's been fantastic. And um, you have mentioned that these people that are in the professional space, they might really be going through uh, a lot in terms of, you know, staying accountable. Um, and um, what, what would you encourage people um, not to be afraid to ask for help? Because obviously when you're entering into a new venture, it is very critical to learn from those that are around you. How would you encourage people to, um, to ask for help from those that they uh, trust? Simply ask the question and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. I, I do it because they have to share. Your passion shows. Your passion, when you're excited about something, it shows. And, and it, it draws people in because people like to be around high energy and smiles and happiness. So... And, and anybody that loves you, be a family member or be a friend who really cares about you, will support you. And if they have any objections, the, those objections for, from somebody who loves you, and you will know if somebody comes from a, from a place of care, is purely their fear for you. So then simply ask questions. I think the more question a person asks of another, the more understanding is. And you know, Stephen Covey, uh, and I did the seven habits twice. And the, the thing that stayed with me is seek first to understand and then be understood. You gotta understand what is the objection of the other person first, and then you have the answer. You, don't need, you don't need to have uh, a million reasons. Sit and listen, ask many, many questions. The more questions you ask, the more clarity comes. Great stuff. Obviously, um, I thought you were going to say, oh, well, I'm here to help. Right. Now, if somebody has been watching this, how can they now get a hold of you for you to actually help them streamline their goal setting uh, strategies and procedures so that they can actually have a business or a life that's of a happier existence? Well, um, first of all, thank you so much for that. And I, I have to tell you, I didn't get onto this uh, program to to flog my coaching but but of course i'm here to help it's more like i i think it's what i found in out there in this world is that people don't deal with me or say with you all the time they have a life so it's easier to teach them to go out and work with with who they have and then and then get help from them but by all means i'm definitely here to help so they can call me and i don't know um how you're gonna do this do you do i just say my number you're gonna write it down or, oh no, or, no 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 uh you know everybody will be flocking your house i mean looking the way you look right now you wouldn't want to be giving your number out into the internet you know <laughs> So, oh, no, 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 my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I will put down your details and, and the show notes there so that uh, people can uh, get a hold of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for the compliment. My head is kind of out here. <laughs> but, yes, <laughs> no, I, I, I understand all. Yeah, so you can, you can give them my email address and my phone number, and I would be happy to help anybody. Um, as far as the goal setting program, you know, I do it one on one. I do it one with. Uh, I do it with a couple, and I think as a couple is concerned, it's great when they do their goals and they have their separate goals, and then they learn how to bring it together for their common good. And then I also do it with groups, and I do workshops. So I'm working on preparing my workshops for the next year. So I'm going to have workshops. 
And I also do life coaching and accountability coaching. So I've got lots of different types of coaching. The best thing is for somebody to call me and then I do have a half an hour session with them for complimentary and then finding out what they need. And based on that, then I'm able to recommend what would be the next best step. Understandable. Well, obviously you have now all this knowledge. If you've been watching right from the start, that um, is going to help you set goals that will let you stand head and shoulders above the rest, either in your business life or in your personal life. Because as we have noticed, without goals, you can actually lack focus and direction. You know, when you go out and set personal goals, it puts you in the driver's seat to actually give you power to transform your own life in whatever direction that you're going to desire. Now, Annie, I cannot thank you enough for taking your time and spending it with us and tell us um, how to set um, our goals here tonight. Thank you so much. Prosper, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. And thank you, everybody. And have a prosperous life. <laughs> Understandable. Well, we're here to make everybody else have a life that's profitable and um, enjoyable. Well, thank you so much. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to this channel, please do because you get content like this that will help you start scale and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. See ya. All right, cool stuff. Woo, woo, woo. Now I need you to um, introduce this show. How do you think we went? I think we went great. I, I you we know, created. We... You know, you have the most amazing energy that comes out of you. <laughs> you, you create a space the way you question the way you guide you are fantastic you have to have your own show on television <laughs> okay now you're just making me blush <laughs> before before i forget before i forget let's um i want you to introduce this show and then i'll take it off record and then we, we can chat a little bit more um, so I want you to say, hi, my name is Anne. Um, you're on the online yeah. prosperity show. We are going to be talking about goals, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. And watch prosper blush. <laughs> 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 Whatever you have. Okay. Whenever okay. you're ready. Okay. <laughs>